Hello again. In this session, I'm going to talk about business continuity management, and in particular, how do we actually identify whether something that we do in our organization is a critical business activity. Now, business continuity management is all about making sure that in a time of disaster or after a time of disaster, we are able to continue operation of our most critical business functions, or if they have gone down, restore those critical business functions back to a state of working again. Otherwise, if there is a huge lag time there, we may not be able to survive as an organization. We may lose market share. We may lose our customer loyalty. We may not be able to provide the services that we are legislated to provide. So it's important that we understand those critical business activities. Now, one way we can do that, and it's been a way that's been done in the past, is we look at all of the activities we do and we rank them from, say, one to five, where one is the least important and five is the most important. There are some drawbacks to doing it that way. And one of those, and the, the most important of those drawbacks, or most significant drawbacks, sorry, is the fact that that's very subjective. And everybody in the organization believes what they do is important. But there is a difference between what is important and what is critical. So one of the methods that you can use is to actually use your consequence matrix to determine the criticality of a particular critical business or particular business activity. And what we do is we look at the activity and we start to put some time frames around it. It might be zero to 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, 48 to 72, greater than 72 hours. And we start to look against all of our critical success factors from our consequence matrix as to what the consequence would be if that particular function was not able to be done for that period of time. So let's say we have a function that within the first 24 hours, if we are not undertaking that function, it is going to have severe consequences, whether they be in safety, reputation, uh, political damage, financial, those sort of things. So what we want to try and do is identify those that have the highest level consequences at the earliest point of time after the disaster. So if we've identified those particular functions that they would become severe or have severe consequences in a very short time frame, obviously, therefore, we have identified what is critical to our business. Now, what I've done is I've given or put onto the website an example of a critical business function analysis, a spreadsheet. And you're more than welcome to use that. And Obviously, you will you'll be able to change all of the time frames that I've put on there, all of the critical success factors that you measure consequence again. And obviously, you'll need to change the activities. But that is a resource that I hope that you would actually um, use. It is a much better way of just having this arbitrary discussion around what's the most important thing that we do in our organization. If you link it to our consequence matrix, then you almost have some supporting data to justify why you have chosen that as a critical business activity. The first time I used this, we turned an organization that had identified 30 critical business functions into five. That's how powerful it can be. So I encourage you to have a look at the website and that tool is yours to, to use and, um, as you see fit. And hopefully it's useful to you. That's all I've got for this session. And as always, let's be careful out there.